Hey YouTube, this is a 2006 Jeep Liberty and it's here because it's leaking gear lube from uh, both axle tubes out onto the brakes as well as the pinion seal. So we're going to put uh, a new pinion seal in it and we're going to replace both the axle seals. I went ahead and pulled the tire off. This is the uh, passenger side rear disc brake and you can see right here how it's dark and up here it's light. That's a sign right there and then if we get around and we get up underneath you can see all the crud. So if you've got a vehicle, and this, this stuff is about a quarter of an inch thick, if you've got a vehicle that's you've got a cruddy buildup like this on it right here, you probably have an axle seal leaking. Both sides are like this. I won't show you the other side. It looks just like this right here. So we're going to pull the brakes off, pull the differential cover off, and I'll show you how to get these axle seals replaced. I'm going to take a pry bar and just, uh, just pry that piston back just enough so that I can get the brakes back over this rust ridge that's built up on here. A pretty significant rust ridge. And these brakes, as you can see, they're right down to, right down to nothing. They're wore out and I gave the customer a price on brakes and they decided that they were going to do the brakes themselves but they wanted me to do the axle seal. Both the nuts on the, or the bolts, the caliper pins are 13 millimeter on this so we'll pull those pins out. There's a little clip on the back side of the top side of the brake pad on the outboard edge that has to be pushed down to release the brake caliper. It's just like an anti-rattle clip is all it is. And put that off to the side. Pull the inboard one out. You can see there's only there's only about two millimeters left on there. But just enough to break these loose. Uh, just, about, just about all applications, not everything. But. It's not that much of the parking brakes. Okay, I'll go do the other side and then we'll lift it up and I'll show you how to take the differential pin out. Okay, I pulled the cover off, I drained the fluid out. I've got the vehicle in neutral. I left it neutral and I'll show you why. This is the carrier right here. That's your ring gear, your pinion gears up there in the front. And right here, this is your differential pin. I don't know if you can see that, but it moves a little bit. That pin is what actually holds the axles in place. Um, 180, degree, 180 degrees from this area right here, there's actually a little bolt that holds that pin in place. So that's why I left it neutral. Spin it around, you can see that pin right there. And then if I push in, well, I don't know if you can see it, but the ends of the axles are right here and there's a little C-clip on each end. By removing that pin we're able to push the axle in just about maybe a, a, an eighth of an inch. Just far enough to get that clip out and then the axle pulls out. So let's get this around here. Right there's our bolt and uh, eight millimeter head on it. Pretty common on just about everything. You want to be careful using a box and wrench on it because uh, um, if you, if you strip it off, they get kind of hard to get out after that, so be careful. Okay, 
you have to use a wrench, at least try to break it loose with a socket, but in this case, we can get right on there with a wobble socket. Get that pin out, or the bolt out. Okay, that's what it is right there. It's just a long pin with some threads and a hex head on it. Okay, now I'm going to roll this down and I'm going to reach, oh, I don't even have to. Typically I'll reach up inside in the back and I'll push that pin down, but in this case I don't have to. It came right out. This is your differential pin. This is what holds the axles from coming in too far, allowing those clips to fall out. Now you want to be careful. You don't want to spin one of the sides right here because what will happen, let me roll this around if I can roll it around so that you can see it. Okay, these are your side gears, these are your spider gears. If you roll this, you'll actually roll one of your spider gears right out. And then it's kind of a pain, it's not terrible, it's not the end of the world, but it can be a pain in the butt to get them lined back upright. So, we got the pin out, now I'm going to try to push the back in. I don't want to get anything in. Okay, there we go. Let me go grab a magnet. Sometimes you might have to hit the end of that with like a plastic, uh, you know, like a plastic four pound uh, mallet or something to get it in far enough to get the pin out, but this one, I'm sorry, to get the uh, shim out, uh, I might have to do that with this one, it's not coming. Come on. Alright, let me grab my camera. You can hit it with a regular hammer, but it's just not recommended. This is a plastic uh, shop peen dead blow hammer. And they're just horseshoe shaped clips. If I can get one out, I'll show you. And that is it. That is all that holds your axle shafts from sliding out. That little thin horseshoe shaped clip. What it is, is on the inside of the side gear, there's a recessed area where you, you slide that clip onto the axle shaft and then you pull the axle shaft out. This round outside diameter of the clip actually slides into that gear. And once you put the differential pin in place, the axle shafts can't come in anymore uh, so it doesn't allow these clips to fall out. It's pretty wild though, that's what holds your axles in. <laughs> There's that one. Just like that. Now, the axles are free to come out. So let me move you over here. I'm going to rag on it because it's going to be... Okay, with the axles out, you can see. I don't know if I can get this thing to let me focus. It won't let me focus. Okay, now we got it to focus. So with the axle out, this is the actual seal right here. You can see the, the axle bearing in there. Um, you can see all the crud built up all the way around here. This thing's been leaking for quite a while. What I typically do to keep that stuff from getting inside 
is I'll just take a I'll just take a shop rag and I'll ball it up and I'll stuff it in there to keep anything from getting in the bearing. And then we'll pop these out with a probably with a pry bar and clean up the area and install the new ones. Put it back together. Easy peasy. Typically what I do to get these out, they usually come out pretty easy. Let me, uh, stuff my rag in the hole just to keep the gunk from getting in there. Take your pry bar, stick it in there, and catch the upper edge of it, and then just give it a little pop. There it is. That is one cruddy seal. So I'm going to clean this area up and uh, make sure it's clean on the inside surface here. And I'll go grab the new seals and we'll put it back together. Okay, I blew away most of the crud that was all around it. I sprayed it down with a brake parts cleaner. And you just want to clean the inside surface where the seal sits so that it has a good seal. <laughs> you don't want it to leak. And then I like to take a little grease and put a little bit of grease on the bearing and then I clean the axle off and then I also grease the, the seal. I, gre I actually grease the axle just so that it doesn't run dry when it first gets uh, put in the service. So. It may be, uh, it may be a, a redundancy here, but um, it just gives me a little peace of mind knowing that this bearing has something on it. It will not ever run dry. And you can use anything to drive the seal on. Um, I spent, I think, like $35 on a Harbor Freight kit, and it's, it comes with this driver, and then you just unscrew this little nut here from it, and it's got a whole bunch of these adapters. This is, a, this is for installing uh, uh, wheel bearings, like the old serviceable style bearings that go in the, the front rotors on vehicles. Uh, it installs the bearing races, and then it also installs the seals. And it's got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine nine different uh, adapters, all different sizes. But if you don't have this, you can use anything. You can use a hammer, you can use a piece of flat stock, uh, a larger socket, anything at all just to drive that on and, and, and then just make sure that when it gets, gets to the axle tube, it's flat. The new seal is a little bit different. The old seal had a lip that went around the outside of this. Uh, the new updated seal does not. It actually sits right in there, re, you know, recessed. So it's important to have something that's bigger in diameter than the axle tube so there's no chance of you driving the seal further in than it needs to be so we'll go ahead and we'll get this started you can actually hear it change pitch, it changes sound because I push the seal all the way in and now as I'm hitting the tool it's hitting on the axle tube so we know that the seal is seated and it's true. So you just want to take a rag and wipe down this whole surface because it's going to slide on that seal all the way in. You don't want any dirt or grime to get caught up between the, the axle shaft and the seal or the bearing for that matter. So clean the surface real good and then like I said what I like to do is I like to put a thin layer of grease on here just to ensure that A the bearing is, isn't dry and the seal isn't dry. Um, that will prevent it from having any leaks. At least in my mind it will. I've always done it that way and I've had good luck. So, And 
And like I said, this might be a redundancy, but I've always done it this way, and I've always had success. Well, I haven't always had success, but for the most part. And I put the grease on here rather than on the seal, because with the axle sliding in there, by the time it's all the way in there, you might have pushed most of the grease in there. So now that that's done, and this side is done, we'll slide the axle shaft back into the axle tube, trying not to drag it as we do, but inevitable, it's going to drag a little bit. It'll get tighter when it gets up to the seal, and then when you get up to the, when you get up to the uh, differential, you have to kind of pick the axle up and kind of move it around so you find the hole. And once you get it in, sometimes you got to twist it a little bit to clock it to get the splines to line up. But you don't want to turn it too much because don't forget, you don't want to knock those those gears out. There. Now I'm going to go do the same thing to the other side and then we'll put it back together. I replaced the, uh, the other seal. I slid the axle in. So I got both axle tubes in place and now I'm just going to insert these C-clips. So push in on the axle to get it as far in as possible, and if it doesn't go in far enough, oh, it did. There we go. Okay, so the, I don't know if you can see that, but I, I got the seal in place. Now I'm going to pull out on, I'm sorry, I got the C-clip in place. Now I'm going to pull out on the axle shaft, and there, it just disappeared out of sight because it's sitting down in the recessed area of this gear. So let me grab the one for that side and do the same thing. Okay, I got the axle pushed all the way in, put the clip right in there, right up tight against the uh, gear. What's going on here? I gotta grab my hammer, I gotta tap on this one. Sometimes they don't go in, if they don't go in, while you're trying to put the clip in place, give it a little tap on the end of the, uh, the end of the axle. There it goes, and it popped into place. It's not all the way in though. There we go. It's all the way in, pull out on the axle, the clip disappears because it's sitting in the recessed area. Now I have enough room to put my differential pin back in. Now, I've moved it. I've, I've moved these a little bit so, so the gears as you can see move so in order to line it up right just stick your finger through the hole and you can feel it okay I just got my thumb in there I can roll this back out and lined up so I can slide that pin in and put the little bolt in that holds it in place Not all of these slide in and out that easy. Some of them you got to tap them in place. Some of them are, are a pretty tight fit. So make sure when you go to put it in that you put in the end with the hole last so that this pin can slide in there. Or this bolt. I guess it's a pin. but So this pin can slide into this pin. So we're going to feed that right up through there. And if it doesn't line up like that, okay, it's not going any further, just wiggle one of the things a little bit until the gears line up. See that? Now it's stuck again. What are we stuck on? Oh, we're stuck on the axle. There we go. And once you have the pin in there, even if it's just holding one of the uh, spider gears, the other one can't go anywhere. So you can move it in there. So you, you know you can wiggle these gears. So we're going to put it right there. We don't want to go past because, like I said, sometimes they stick. And if you put it too far past, you got to back it down and tap it down the other way. And there. Just like that. Let me pull this out a little bit here and I'll grab my quarter drive socket. 
ratchet. And don't he-man this thing tight. <laughs> it's only got to be snug. It doesn't hold anything. It just stays in place to hold that in place. There's absolutely no reason to run this thing home. That's it. Axle seals are done. I'm going to clean this area up right here and uh, clean up the uh, cover. And it, it just uses an RTV, so I'm going to, I call it, you know, I call it gluing it back on. I'm going to glue it back on. And then while that's setting up, I'll switch, switch angles here and we'll do the uh, pinion seal on the front. All right, I'm going to pull this drive shaft off and then remove the flange so that we can get inside behind there and remove that leaking seal. You can see it's all wet right here. It was leaking here. This thing was leaking from everywhere an axle can leak from. <coughs> uh, the bolts that secure the, the drive shaft to the flange are all 15 millimeter head. Save yourself some aggravation, leave the vehicle neutral if you ever do this job. Ah. So you can turn the drive shaft. Ah. Got a bungee cord to hold this off to the side. If you pull it out, you might lose some fluid out of the rear of the transfer case, but I don't need to pull it out, so I'm just going to move it off to the side. Let me go grab a socket that fits that. Two millimeters. TV in there, keep it from leaking. And you can see that seal looks like they got uh, maybe some uh, long grass or something all wrapped around there. That might have been a failure. It might have got wrapped around, twisted up on the inside. It's not there now, but this this seal actually has a little lip around here. So I'm going to try to knock that, get in behind that, and knock that out of there that way.
Here's our brand new seal. Now this one's a little bit tougher to install because you can't use a flat face driver because of the, the pinion and because of the way the seal's made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find a socket or something that fits the perimeter. You don't have to. If I can't, and I, if I can't find anything, I won't do it that way. You can just tap it in, but to get a nice straight even seat, I like to find a socket, anything that fits the uh, the the diameter of the seal and use that and then we'll tap on that to push the seal in. Okay, I found a big uh, four-wheel drive uh, axle nut socket that fits right on there. Almost like it was made for it. <laughs> and judging by the marks on it, I've probably used it as a driver before. change pitch when it got when it's seated all the way and now direct metal to metal hit so just like the uh, the axles I'm gonna clean this off real good I'm gonna put a thin layer of grease on here because that seals dry some of the seals come from the from the factory with a thin layer of grease in there but this one did not You don't need a lot, just enough to make it slime. If you put too much on there, it'll sling out. You might, somebody might mistake that for a, another leaky seal. So just enough to cover that. Just for good measure, this had had a little bit of a uh, RTV on there, so I'm going to put a little bit more on there. It shouldn't leak through the threads, but it's possible. Now when you tighten this back up, you just want to run it down snug and then tighten it a little bit. You don't want to tighten it too much because you'll crush the, uh, the crush sleeve inside here and you'll set, set a little more tension on the uh, pinion preload. So I'm just going to snug it up and then I'll just run it a little bit, make sure it's tight.
kind of goofed a little bit here. It's a good idea to take a paint marker and mark the corresponding you know, uh, flanges. So when you put it back together, you put it back together the same way. It's not the end of the world if you forget it, but if you're ever trying to diagnose a, a driveline vibration, you'll, uh, you'll wish you had. Start all four of these before you run any of them down with the gun. You want to tighten them up and the holes might not be lined up just perfect. And if you tighten it up, you'll have to loosen it and break it loose again. Pinion still done. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, it's been about a half an hour now since I put the cover on, so the RTV is, is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this area up right here, make sure it's nice and dry, fill it up with fluid, put the brake rotors and the, and the calipers back on, put the tires on, and ship it. If, uh, if this video was at all helpful to anyone, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys watching. Have a good night.